there are really no words to describe what World Youth Day was like, or what it meant to the 231 pilgrims who embarked on this incredible journey of faith in July. For nearly 11 days, our group from the Diocese of Bridgeport drew closer to Christ and each other through beautiful moments of grace and through exhausting, sometimes difficult trials. Join us for this special report as we briefly try to explain the unexplainable and give you a brief window into this life-changing experience. Our trip started with a diverted flight and a night in the airport, which, believe it or not, is not how we planned it. However, our pilgrims and chaperones were amazing. They were playing games and singing songs, trying to catch a few minutes of sleep, and enjoying each other's company. There was such a joyful spirit in the room, and many cited this as one of their favorite memories of the trip. When we arrived in Poland the next day, there was a beautiful excitement that permeated the hotel. Even though half of our pilgrims did not arrive until 1 a.m., chaperones and captains from the first flight stayed up to greet the late flight and took care of dinner. The next day, our pilgrims were on retreat, officially beginning their pilgrim journey of faith. Meanwhile, John and Janet took off for Krakow, preparing the way for our pilgrims and exploring the city. On Sunday, it was time to see the Black Madonna and Czestochowa. Pilgrims were lucky enough to celebrate Mass directly in front of this stunning icon, before making their way to Krakow in the evening. Shortly before dinner, everybody arrived and got settled into the Oleandry and the Zaja, their homes for the week. The following day, it was time for one of the most impactful visits of the trip, our tour of Auschwitz. This concentration camp was the site of the murder of over a million and a half people, most of them Jewish. Visiting this site was difficult, but life-changing. Led by our shepherd, Bishop Frank, we prayed for the victims of such heinous violence and for peace throughout the world. We walked through Birkenau saying the rosary with the sorrowful mysteries and had time to reflect upon what we had just experienced. Afterwards, we arrived at the Basilica of Divine Mercy and explored this fantastic, awe-inspiring site. We celebrated Mass in the Shrine with 3,000 of our closest friends, celebrated by Cardinal O'Malley. The following day was the beginning of World Youth Day. Taking it slow in the morning, pilgrims, within their groups, explored the city, visiting churches, and taking in the beauty of Krakow, as well as meeting their peers from around the world. Our pilgrims met people from all over the globe, from over 180 countries, and the excitement and sheer joy present in Krakow on that day is impossible to capture. It was, as Bishop Frank said, truly life-changing. That afternoon, we celebrated the opening Mass for World Youth Day with nearly a million other Catholics. Just as we were saying the Our Father and giving the sign of peace, the skies opened up brilliantly and the light from the sun shined down on the crowd present. It was an amazing moment and one that many of our pilgrims will never forget. The next few days, World Youth Day kicked into full steam. Wednesday was catechesis at the Torin Arena, where pilgrims were able to hear from prominent Catholic speakers and then celebrate Mass. Thursday started with catechesis and it ended with a welcome of the Holy Father, which was a beautiful prayer service attended by well over a million people. Hearing hundreds of different languages and voices all lifted in praise for the Lord was breathtaking. Friday, instead of going to the Torah and Arena for catechesis, we journeyed to Bishop Frank's catechetical session in the beautiful church of St. Catherine. Though at this point, many of us were profoundly exhausted, this session and the Mass that followed were jubilant and lively, and the defining moment in the trip for many pilgrims. Saturday was a split day for our group. Those who were over 18 journeyed 10 miles to the vigil site in preparation for the vigil prayer service and closing mass with Pope Francis. Those under 18 went on the scavenger hunt throughout the city and then converged on the top floor of the hostel for a meal and to watch the vigil. There was this beautiful moment where Bishop Frank translated the Holy Father's words to a captivated room because we could not find the vigil broadcast in English. The following morning, we woke up and watched the closing Mass with Bishop Frank. 
Afterwards, we celebrated a mass of our own and then used our final World Youth Day hours to explore Krakow and bring souvenirs back for our loved ones at home. At 3 a.m., we loaded the buses in the midst of a crazy thunderstorm and headed back to Warsaw. Given traffic and our route, this took us nearly nine hours, and we arrived at the airport just in time for Flight 1 to depart. Flight 2, however, had to wait several hours in the terminal before boarding and saying goodbye to Poland. After a safe flight at nearly 11.30 p.m., we pulled into the Catholic Center, and our journey was over. The next World Youth Day will be in Panama in 2019. Though this is nearly three years away, you would be hard pressed to find someone in our group on this trip telling you not to go. This trip changed the life of nearly every single pilgrim and chaperone that went on it. It was a totally and completely awe-inspiring experience. If you know a World Youth Day pilgrim, we urge you to ask them about their experience. You'll be surprised about what you hear. After this incredible trip, they'd be happy to share. We'll see you for the next episode of Special Report. And if you're between the ages of 18 to 35, we'll see you in Panama. God bless.